When you think of classic mobile games, there's probably a lot that come to mind. Angry Birds, Plants vs. Zombies, Jetpack Joyride, Temple Run, Doodle Jump, Crossy Road, and many, many more. But there's a game I rarely ever see being talked about, and that game is Sortigo. The game was released in 2012 and got 10 million downloads, which may seem like a lot until you consider that Mini Block Craft has five times that amount. Wait, what? So today I'll be taking a look at Sortigo. Did this game hold up as well as I remember, or is it actually garbage and I'm blighted by nostalgia? Today, that's what we're gonna find out. The first thing you see as you open the game is the main menu. It showcases your character with a powerful sword and armor. Once you press start, you can choose a save file, which is something Nintendo apparently couldn't do five years later with Breath of the Wild. You get to customize your character's name, which reminds me of the Zelda series. I'll refer to the character as you because the character doesn't have an actual name. Gameplay-wise, a lot of it was inspired by Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, which is a 2D Zelda platformer on the NES. Once you start the game, you get an opening cutscene. Your character has a nightmare of his master getting attacked. You wake up and go into town as you feel like something is wrong. You're stopped by a man who tells you your master's in the woods. He gives you a bronze sword, saying it's dangerous to go unarmed. I get in my head out. You take the sword, then you enter the woods. There's a basic tutorial and some weak early game enemies. You then make it to the master. He gives you a magic spell, and tells you to go back to the village and talk to the Elder. Not like it really matters anyways, because immediately after that you get killed by some random shadow nerd. So he hits you with this level 100 magic beam and you fucking die. You wake up in the healer's house, and the Elder's already there. You tell him what happened, and he sends you on a journey to get a legendary weapon called the Mage Blade. After that, you're finally free to do whatever you please. The controls are actually surprisingly responsive, and moving around feels very natural, especially when you consider that it's all being played on a touchscreen. Navigation is also fairly easy. The game's two-dimensional, which is pretty linear, however, there are a lot of areas that feel wide open, even if the game is two-dimensional. In the town, you can go to a shop. There you can get a healing potion, a trinket of fire, and an iron sword. The healing potion heals you, the Trinket of Fire can add a damage boost to one of your items, including weapons and magic. And the Iron Sword does more damage. Every time you level up, you get the option to upgrade health, attack power, or magic power. The upgrade system as well as trinkets can make the game a whole lot easier. You go through the fields to try to get to the Forgotten Keep. About halfway through, there's a gap you can't jump across. You have to get the Ferryman to activate the moving platform. He says he'll only let you across if you get his vase from the monsters. So you enter the first mini-dungeon of the game, the Abandoned Guard Tower. In there, you fight Arroyo the Corrupt and snag the vase. The strategy I recommend is... SWORD. Yeah, just keep doing that. You give the vase back to the Ferryman and he activates the platform, allowing you to pass. You keep journeying through some planes for a bit and then you eventually make it to the Forgotten Keep. Wait, is that a person? You do some puzzles and fight two mini-bosses and then you make it to the main boss of the dungeon. It's simply known as a level question mark question mark boss, but it's actually pretty easy to beat. Just hit it when it's charging up attacks, and you'll be fine. After you beat it, it's revealed that the boss is actually a corrupter. Now this boss can be incredibly challenging and annoying at times. It's a bit unfair that you have to fight the boss, then the corrupter immediately afterwards. It can only be harmed by the magic blast attack, and everything else straight up won't work. I recommend leveling up magic power, and using the fire trinket to level up magic as well. After you beat the boss, it's revealed that the Corruptor broke the sword into four shards. You return to the village and talk to the Elder. The Elder tells you to go to Florinum and talk to the King. You go to the Evernight Forest to make your way to Florinum Num Florida. There's a weird wheel that has bad physics, but that's about it. You eventually make it to the outer walls of the castle. You get a key and go inside of a house. That leads you to the city sewers. Now this place is hard. You have to do some tricky platforming in a tight area with fireballs coming out of the ground. In this area, one mistake can take two and a half hearts from you. But if you can somehow get past that, then you make it to the inside of the city. In here, there's another shop, this one having a new sword and some armor. You enter the Eastern Guard Tower, then, get this, then you go to the Western Guard Tower. Whoa. In the Western Guard Tower, there's this really annoying physics shit where you have to, like, walk across a moving platform to get it to move, but it, like, rarely ever works. Here's a compilation of me dying.
After that, you fight a boss, free the king, and he says that there's another piece of the sword in this very tower. Then you fight a wizard. And even with the best stuff in the whole game, this fight still takes like 20 years to beat. After you kill him, you get the second shard of the blade. You're told to go to a place, fight a guy, and get a thing. Wow, I can't believe it! I just summed up practically the entire game after this point. I deserve a medal. So you go to said place, this one being the Great Caves. You go there, you get a new magic power, this one being a grappling hook, and you get another piece of the sword. After that, you go to an ice place, fight an ice boss, and get the last piece of the sword. You merge the pieces together and get the mage blade. Good job. Then you get your final mission. You have to destroy the source of the corruption. You go there, kill a lot of shadow demons, and then finally fight the final boss. Which is in no way a clone of Dark Link from The Legend of Zelda at all. No sir, this is actually a level question mark question mark Master of Chaos. A very original idea for a very original character. So then you kill it and the world is saved. The end. Despite the game's story being more on the generic side, that might actually work more in the game's favor. This is a mobile game. If it had a really deep story with lots of plot points, they'd all be forgotten, as most mobile games are designed to be picked up and played for a few minutes at a time. By having the story be so simple, it makes it a lot easier to just pick up and play from anywhere in the game. This game is a full experience that's exclusive to mobile, and it's free. Sure, there are ads, but they never- Buy our product, you won't, you motherfucking bitch! Sure, there are ads, but they never show up mid-gameplay. It's always when you die or go to a different screen. It can be really challenging and has a lot of content in it. I honestly think this game is great, and everyone watching should at least check it out. But of course, the game still has its flaws. The story is really simple, which leaves a lot to be desired. It can also be incredibly difficult at times, and can lead to the game feeling unfair. The sewer is the first thing that comes to my mind, as there's a lot of places where you can lose a ton of HP with one slight mistake. The game can also be quite cheap, with the bosses all being examples. They have way too much HP and can take out your entire health bar if you're not careful. One more thing, this game will piss you off at some point. To add insult to injury, you have to watch an ad every time you die, which can get on your nerves seriously quickly. The game honestly has a getting over it vibe to it, which really fits in well with the N64 inspired graphics. The game is also pretty short. There's a video of someone 100%ing it in about 3 hours, and the world record speedrun is just over 52 minutes. However, that's out of a total of 5 runs, so there's obviously a lot to be improved. However, on first shard percent, there's actually a total of 38 runs, which is a lot more. Nowadays, this game gets barely any attention. The most popular Sorty Go YouTuber is a creator who goes by the name Dr. Grumble. They have nearly 9,000 subs and get a couple thousand views a video. In my opinion, this actually makes a lot of sense. Sword Ego doesn't have complex lore or the replayability of the other classics, it's just a great game. It just doesn't have much to work with when it comes to content creation. Touch Fu, the developers of Sword Ego, made another game called Grim Valor. It's conceptually very similar to Sword Ego, featuring similar gameplay and even a reference to it, but it's definitely not a direct sequel. The gameplay is very different, and it's much more realistic compared to the cartooniness of Sword Ego. Even though I'd say it's not as good as Angry Birds or Plants vs. Zombies, I still think Sword Ego is a great game that should be talked about more often. In other words, despite its flaws, I think Sword Ego is a forgotten masterpiece. Thanks for watching.